Welcome to the Personal Innovation Podcast, brought to you by PersonalInnovationHub.com. This podcast is all about igniting dreams, passions, careers, and social impact. The objective is for us all to master our inner gifts, create our own future, and live our lives as a love story while leaving a dent on the universe. And now, here's your host, Eric Suryram. Hello, Innovation family. Thank you very much for tuning in to your Motivational Personal Innovation Podcast. I am Eric Serion, your personal innovation evangelist. My work is simply to make us all think bigger about who we are, what we do in a unique way, and how we can change the world through doing what we love. Remember to subscribe to the Personal Innovation Podcast. This podcast is where I present to you the love stories of wonderful people who are falling in love with themselves living their dreams, their passions, and are creating careers that impact the world. Do not forget to visit personalinnovationhub.com. It is where you want to go if you're looking for information, knowledge, and inspiration to build a powerful career based on your dreams, passions, and use it to impact the world. By the way, you can email me, coaching at personalinnovationhub.com. In this episode of your Motivational Personal Innovation Podcast, I bring to you yet another interesting discussion with a very powerful personality that will introduce himself shortly. My brother, on behalf of the Innovation family, I welcome you to the Personal Innovation Podcast. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. uh, I'm happy to be here. Great. Are you ready to help my listeners dream no matter how small, become more passionate about their dreams, create their own unique careers, and leave a dent on the universe? Yes, definitely. I'm excited. Great. I love that excitement. I'm very excited. Your introduction itself has motivated me a lot. Great. (laughs) I, I, I could depend on that to even change the world. Wow. Powerful. That's powerful. Would you rather innovate or stagnate and why? Uh, I will innovate. Uh, because it's very important. Uh, the world at, at the moment needs innovators. When we, we talk of the the, the, the big guys uh, who, who change the world, they are innovators instead of stagnators. So I will innovate. Great. Tell us more about who you are. Uh, basically, my name is Cole Cornelius. Um, uh, I completed an undergraduate course in Kwame Global University. Uh, interesting enough, the course I studied and uh, the passion I'm pursuing are very different, but it seems that it's what happened. I studied industrial art, and now I'm into helping deaf people and hard of hearing people, people in the deaf community. So that is a very uh, 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 contrast, one contrast right there. And I work with Vodafone. I'm I'm a sign lang- I'm at the sign language department, and I supervise the work of for deaf agents. So Vodafone has started a very new innovative uh, service for deaf people where they call in and we assist them with their challenge concerning the network. So that's the innovation we are bringing on board. Yes. Wow. That is so powerful. You know, most people will not understand how you can be working with these people yeah. when you are not one of them. Yeah. So can you take us through how does it, how is it like working f- with these types of people? Oh, okay. I will understand those people because uh, deaf people and hard of hearing people are people minority in society where people withdraw from them. I mean, the passion came from the fact that one of my relatives is deaf. And so we developed from there. He attended Mampong School for the Deaf. So I wanted to, first of all, communicate with him. So what he would do is that he would write uh, the language on paper, then he would teach me with his hands through the sign language. Hope you understand. And then uh, through yeah. that, he, I, I gradually learned the language. And I said, oh, why not take the language a bit further and try to assist them on a larger scale? So we went through this process, and uh, I'm here at the forefront of uh, deaf empowerment. And then... Uh, but can can KTC see that then you have been able to employ four people here at Vodafone, and we are still keeping on the empowerment. And then the next phase of it is to employ the people who work at the retail offices. So this this comes to what you were saying earlier. Your passion and your innovation will lead you to higher heights. 
Wow. That's so powerful. Yeah. My brother, tell us, since childhood, what have you always dreamt or fantasized becoming? Uh, since childhood, it's interesting enough, I've always dreamed of uh, 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 becoming a, a, a lawyer. Uh, someone wow. who speaks for other people. And then I think growing up, uh, working with uh, people out of, out of hearing and deaf people, I think that even though I didn't go into mainstream, I think I found a new way of expressing that, speaking for them in their mouthpiece. Uh, so that, that has been the passion. You see, university family, mm -hmm. whenever you have a passion to do something, yeah and you are unable to do that particular thing, ask yourself, how can I transform this passion into something else? Yes. He had a passion he had wanted. He was dreaming about becoming a lawyer, speaking for other people. And today, truly, he's speaking for these groups of people yes. who are not able to speak for themselves. And that is so powerful. Yes. Wow. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm loving this episode <laughs> already, yeah, Cornelius. Must, I'm loving this episode. Myself too. <laughs> that's wow, nice. that's interesting. What puts you on fire today? What is your passion today? Uh, my passion today is the, is the fact that um, I see I see a, a, a lot of our people. Uh, we know that in Ghana, most people are unemployed, and then uh, we want to assist. Yeah. But uh, most of the times, we leave these things to those in policy, uh, those in authorities. But I ask myself most of the times, what can I do personally to also assist? Then I realize that in my own little corner, if gradually I'm able to help uh, uh, these type of people, deaf people and hard of hearing people, I'm also taking away some of the burden on the shoulders of government. And then uh, wow. trading these people in vocation, uh, giving them uh, uh, employment in the big corporate environment. I, I, apart from the vocation and being self-employed and all those things. So these are the things that uh, keeps me awake in the morning. I'm excited that, that I'm going to work. I'm always excited because I, I, I look forward to going to help someone in particular. So that is what keeps me. Wow. Wow. Innovation family, what are you doing in your corner? Are you waiting for government to fix the problems you identify? Or you are creating solutions for the problems that you are identifying? Yes, that's the question. I am loving this episode. That's the question. And it is so powerful. Yeah, yeah. That's true. What percentage of what you do today did you learn from school or traditional education, my brother, Cornelius? Yes, yeah, Eric. Just like I started with, I said there was a contrast between what I studied in school and what I'm doing now. And it has been the wave uh, through, throughout the... Uh, the time that and people have observed those uh, people who have been in school with the things they study and then the thing after they graduate the things that they do is completely different i don't know whether it's back here in africa that uh, it, it is or it is a general thing but uh, i studied industrial arts and then uh, textiles but i graduated and entered into this uh, uh, humanitarian and uh, social entrepreneurship. Social sector. enterprise. Yes. Wow. Yes. So, so you, you can say I, I studied art, but now I'm doing social entrepreneurship. So I didn't study social science or economics. Yeah. Social entrepreneurship is actually an art. Yes. It is an art of giving value. It is an art of creating the essence of life for other people. Thank, thank it's, a, it's, a, it's an art of giving life to other people. So you're still in the business of art, oh, okay. thank which is so powerful. Yes. Which and, is so and powerful. Now I will agree. Do the distinction is not that huge. I agree very much. Sure. Can you list for us some of the things you are able to do today that you did not learn from traditional education, from your industrial arts school? Um, I think uh, there are uh, a few, and one of the major uh, uh, ones will be, it will be that uh, studying about uh, uh, money, studying about how money, accountancy, wow. how money works. Uh, in school, most of the times, uh, what they teach you is, uh, they teach us to, uh, 
come out and work for the various professions they've taught us with. But uh, they, on top of that, they did not teach us about how to manage our money, how to come out and motivate people, how to come out and lead people, all those extra things. I think you have to learn on your own and be a self-motivator to be able to do that. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. My brother, do you have to be a particular type of personality to be able to work with the type of, uh, the kind of people you are working with today? What would you say is your personality type and how has most of the things you do today um, been influenced by your personality type? Yeah, it's, it's two things. Uh, first of all, the personality type, is ca- most of it, you have to be caring. And then and, and you have uh, a deep heart uh, for people who are vulnerable. You have to be caring. Then you have to be imaginative on that side to be able to imagine yourself into other people's shoe and how they feel. So if you combine these two things, you, you be caring and imaginative, it just push you and gravitate you towards uh, helping other people. So that would be the personality types you, you, you have to have. Wow. You see, um, you, you narrated a story of how a relative of yours uh, yes. was there yes. and uh, through that you were able to feel for her or him yes. and you were able to learn how to communicate with this person yes. and that yes, is what has transformed yeah. into uh, your career today yes definitely but, but 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 tell us how has the journey been for you transitioning from that personal angle of you relating to a relative to a more broader angle of you now becoming a careerist, uh, uh, social entrepreneur in the area of sign languages? Oh, oh yes, thank you very much. It's a brilliant question. Um, I, 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 just like I said, I started by caring and, and gradually I asked myself, what can I do to help? And so in my own small way, I was organizing language classes for those who can speak like me and you and i taught them the sign language uh, the reason why i was doing that was that uh, i had in mind that if more people know the sign language then the deaf people will no longer be a very small minority then by then most people know the sign language at the time i was advocating wow. that basic schools our ghs system that we have here uh, if you have french and other language inside, then nothing stops us from adding sign language to it because deaf people, you are living with deaf people, and you have to be able to communicate in their language. So that's the advocacy I've been through. The next, uh, we st- I started doing this, the, the first establishing a remedial school for the deaf people. And then uh, wow. remedial, the first remedial school actually, and then we're, we're still working on it. Now we've and all our students have passed out and we are looking forward to the next bag of students who will join. So that is the social entrepreneurship. And the third thing I would say is technology that has also helped me, that is social media. You, 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 you identified me on social media and then that, so that is what has given me that uh, broader angle, just like you said, technology and advertising myself and putting myself out there and attracting other people to also come in and support. So that is, that is basically it. Wow. Wow, this is so inspirational. This is so motivational. Thank you for and I'm loving this episode <laughs> of your personal innovation podcast. What is your favorite quote and what do you want my innovation family to learn from it? It's, uh, my favorite quote I've been stating most of the time on my social media is that the businesses of the future are those that embrace diversity and inclusion uh, in their business. So that, that, that will be the businesses of the future and those that refuse I think uh, they, 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 they will collapse in the near future. So the business of the future are those that embrace diversity and inclusion. Wow. The word is diversity and inclusion. Yes. Without these words, you will die soon. And that is all personal innovation is all about. Yes. Are you diversifying yourself? Are you reinventing yourself? Are you recreating yourself? Or you are still in that old ways of doing things? Yes. Change your style. Stop being like that. Change your style, please. And that is what my brother Cornelius is telling us on this episode of your motivational 
podcast. Absolutely. My brother, entrepreneurship or employment, which of one of these will you choose any day and why? Uh, I, I will, on any day, I will choose entrepreneurship. Uh, but I won't be uh, too radical in my view that uh, those who are coming out of school should first of all go into employment if they have the opportunity so that they learn the art of entrepreneurship before they jump because you can't blindly jump you don't know what you are jumping into whether a pool of crocodiles or what so first of all you have to enter the system wow. through employment and learn the art of entrepreneurship and then you jump eventually that was what i would say to that university family first practice and then you will learn more about your area and then you can then specialize perhaps that is what my brother is telling us now what will you say is your career today? Do you think it is a bad fit job? Is it your dream job? Or will you say it is your bridge job? T talk to us. Ab ab yes, absolutely. It's a dream job. Uh, I started uh, through a lot of uh, uh, jobs, corporate systems, and I've ended up where I am today. And it won't stop now. We continue to grow and establish ourselves as a conglomerate. Uh, as a huge social entrepreneur system. So it won't stop today, but I'm in the process. I'm in my dream job. Yes. Wow. Powerful. What will you say is your career and personal goals then? What is your goal? Uh, but my goal personally eventually is to uh, have uh, uh, something of my, uh, my mentor, uh, Patrick Ewa, uh, the Chelsea University man. Wow. Uh, I, I want to have something like what he has had, a university that he has for his innovators. So he had an idea and he built a uni university for his innovators. So what I want to do different is also have a university for only deaf people and hard of hearing people, just like we have in US, Gallaudet University, the only deaf university in the world. So you go into the campus, the only people you see is that those who are communicating with their hands in sign language. So I want to have such a university. Wow. wow. And I know with God on our side and with your prayers and with God on your side, you will be here. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's, that's powerful yes. and I look forward. It is possible. It is possible. It is possible. We, be, we believe all humans are unique. What would you say is that particular skill or ability, talent or personality trait that makes you stand out from anyone else who does exactly what you do today? Yeah, on any day, if you ask me, I will say the same thing over and again. It's about continuous learning, self-learning. No one can teach you. Your teachers, the only thing your, our teachers do is they guide us. But... We depend on ourselves, self-learning, autodidact. We keep pushing and motivating ourselves. So self-learning is what I would say that will get you there. Auto-guidance, auto-guidance, very important. What is your biggest yes. struggle today in, in what you're doing? What is your biggest struggle? What challenges are you facing? And how are you working towards winning the game? Yes, the, the biggest uh, struggle has always been the old cliche, uh, having funds and then resources uh, but you are putting in even though probably the money will not be pouring in now but if we continue to hone uh, our craft you continue to organize those i'm working with uh, we start doing innovative things i think the uh, investors out there they are not they, they will not be too blind to the fact that this is very innovative and has a potential and they will say they will not invest in it so first of all, what you are doing is trying to make it very attractive for investors to also say, okay, this yeah. guy is running a remedial school for the deaf people. He wants to run a school for the deaf people that train innovators in the deaf community. So let's invest in it. That's what I want to do. Wow. Wow. What do you think we need to all start doing about our weaknesses to achieve our goals? Uh, I, I believe that the, the, the most important thing is that... Uh, you, 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 you work on your strength, but don't forget about your weakness, just like you're saying. You work on your strength over and over again. It overshadows the weaknesses, but uh, yes, you have to also deal with that too, and then gradually it goes off. Wow. That is, that is so powerful. 
My brother, how will you define personal innovation? I call myself a personal innovation evangelist. And my work is to spread the news, the gospel about personal innovation. Because I believe that, because I believe that the future needs personal innovation. How will you define personal innovation and how relevant do you think this concept is to our careers, to our business, and to the world of entrepreneurship going forward? Yes, uh, personal innovation, uh, I would think that um, uh, it is, it is a, a very important thing such that you, you don't have to invent a new way of doing things, but it's adding new ideas to the old ways of doing things. So personally, you grow yourself and you go into a job or an area where uh, they are using the old ways of doing things. So you add new ideas to it. We are not frightening you with bring a huge idea that is going to change the world. Yes, you, you, you do that, but gradually you add new ideas to eventually change the world. So personal innovation, adding new ideas every day to the old system so we, we revolutionize and change the world. Wow, that's so powerful. Innovation family, the fact is that you are not supposed to reinvent the wheel, but what ideas are you bringing to the table to make sure that the world becomes a better place? That is what personal innovation is all about, which is so powerful. Who is that one individual, that icon, that celebrity, that mentor, a coach that you look up to in everything you do and why? As, uh, I believe you, during the conversation, I've mentioned him already. I read about him a lot, Patrick Owa, the, the, the founder wow. of Asashi University. Uh, he, he comes first in my mind, and then definitely uh, I'll mention my dad too. And then, yeah, by Patrick Owa. That's powerful. That's okay. powerful. Do you think you're a brand today? Do you think that you can become a brand in that niche uh, of death and heart of hearing people and become a, a brand that will drive emotions, loyalty, credibility, and return on investment, and even be remembered by these people even when you are no more? Yes, definitely. And uh, the process has already begun. And uh, 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 the reason I, I see that is uh, uh, when, when Vodafone were looking for the ambassador, somehow that will represent their deaf and hard of hearing uh, section. Uh, they, they had to go to the Ghana National Institution for the Deaf, and they have to reference me to Vodafone that uh, this guy, or Cornelius, he is the one uh, we can point straight to that you, you need him in your, your system to represent the uh, deaf and hard of hearing. So I believe I mean, I've, wow. I, I've become a brand. So like if I, I could ask you, if I have not become a brand, a, 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 a national institution will not mention me to a huge multinational corporation, right? So, so we are so, in the process and then I believe we, we gradually get there to the ultimate, to the pinnacle where we want to be. Wow, powerful. Innovation family, what are you doing today that would get you recommended by somebody? Yes. What are you doing today? Do something today that will yes. help you get recommended by somebody and you yes. will never regret your actions. That's very powerful. Yes. Definitely. But tell us, what steps have you taken Definitely. in the past and what plans, what steps have you taken in the past that made it possible for this recommendation to come? What steps have you taken? If you can uh, outline some of them for my listeners so that they can also take action on the things they have to do? Yeah, the, the steps uh, I took in the past, first of all, j just like I said before, it's learning. Uh, learning about the, what you want to do, the, 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 the turn you want to go into, the, the, the passion you have, learning about it yourself. You don't wait till uh, someone uh, comes and call you into it, but you start from where you are and learn about it. Me, my situation, the thing I wanted to go into was assisting the entire deaf community. So I was doing it on my own. So when you are doing it on your own, just like uh, the Bible says, when you are shining in your own definitely someone will identify you and then, then recommend you if if uh, uh, you, uh, something is being mentioned. For example, if they mention uh, 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 music, your name should come to mind 
or if they mention deaf community who we are looking for someone to assist them, your name should come to mind. The particular thing you are doing, if it's maybe podcasting, if they mention it, that oh, we need someone, your name should come to mind. So you should be doing it in your little corner. Then you, they mention the need for it, then your name comes to everybody's mind and you are the one recommended for it. Wow. Innovation family stand out in your little corner and you surely stand out and shine to the world in a very beautiful way. That yes. will be what you need to start doing yes. today. Start shining in that little corner and of course you become an authority in your field. Just as my brother Cornelius has become an authority in his field and everybody else is talking about him. So powerful. So powerful. My brother, yeah. your network is your net worth. We need to always think about who we are or who we know and who knows us to help us advance our dreams. How do you go about networking with people necessary yes. to achieve your dreams? Yeah, first of all, I use uh, the uh, old traditional way, which is uh, uh, what we have. You know, uh, we attend seminars, workshops uh, on on what I'm doing, workshops on uh, the turn I want to go into. So uh, at the workshop and the seminars, we network and we connect with new people and engage. And secondly, that is the new wave, which is social media. And I'm on LinkedIn, so I, I, I connect. When, you, when the advice I'll give to my, my, my other young people is when you jump on social media, make sure the thing that you want to do you connect to those who are doing similar. Don't just follow uh, any other people and consume feed just uh, like you are consuming. Follow other people who are doing similar things in your field and network with them. So that is the two ways. First of all, I attend workshops on it. And secondly, I use social media to also connect to people with food because definitely I cannot be in any part of the world at the same time. Wow. Cornelius. You have told us about yes, networking, attending, attending workshops, um, learning from other people. Yes. But I want to know again, in, is there any other yes, thing that sir. you do to stay educated, knowledgeable, and up-to-date as far as your area of expertise or industry is concerned? Yes, just, uh, just like uh, I've stated earlier, one, which is the workshops I do attend, and I make conscious effort to always update myself with current information in the field I am into. So I, I read most of the time uh, online. I buy books online about uh, the field I am into. Currently, I'm reading a, a book uh, about the deaf community, which I bought online. So I, I, I keep myself up to date about what is happening, the trends, the ins and the outs. Uh, so that is what helps me to uh, keep going. All right. So you have mentioned books, mm, yeah, uh, and other internet internet resources. Yeah. But can you give us one more resource that you like to recommend to my listeners um, that is helping you achieve the things you're doing today, and you like to recommend to my listeners? Yeah, definitely. What we are doing now, podcasting. If if you have to, you want to be a social entrepreneur like I'm doing and, and I'm aspiring to be bigger in the social, uh, you have to listen to uh, more of podcasting. You have to listen to a lot of uh, these uh, uh, messages on social entrepreneurship, motivational messages, and listen to other people's stories. Tap into other people's ideas and energies, and that will catapult you to your next level. Wow. So you, you mentioned that you have been sharing your stories, what you're doing on LinkedIn and other social platforms. But what strategy do you use? Yes. How do you go about sharing your story? Can you give us that strategy that you use? Yes, yeah, so the, the, the strategy I use is that um, uh, now we have the, the, the mainstream media and then... then it, the, the social media in itself are interested in one particular thing. I said, the thing you post, probably they may not be interested. So you take what you are into, what you are passionate about, then you 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 uh, try to harmonize it with what the, the people will be interested in. 
So I take something about the deaf community. Then I connect it with something people will be interested in, something that is inspiring, something that is innovative, something that is compassionate. So people, a lot of people will read it and then there will be, they draws a lot of traffic and it draws a lot of attention to your site. Wow, powerful. You told us about the dream to build a university for the deaf. Yes. A dream to build a university. <laughs> yes. And this dream is so powerful. Most but definitely. in the next few months, Most in definitely. the next one year, what new thing will you do to make sure that you are a step towards achieving that university um, establishment that you want to achieve for yourself? So that when we meet again, we'll say, yes, we are, you are a step ahead in achieving that. What will you start doing? Yes. Starting from today. Yes. yes. Yeah, great. Uh, so, um, a dream, you, 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 when you mention a dream and it is at a far distance, uh, it doesn't motivate you. So, uh, just like you said, what's the next thing you are doing that will push you towards the big goal? So, what I'm doing is uh, beyond doing classes for those to learn sign language and supervising them. We are, we are trying to strengthen our remedial school for the deaf. So this remedial school uh, would give me it would be like an experiment to start an actual school, which will be like uh, a secondary school. So we are, we are looking for maybe in the next year, uh, strengthen our remedial school. It gives one, it gives you uh, uh, experience to start an actual school, and two, it gives you the leverage that you are already in a school, so you can register easily and have it. So this, this is what uh, the two things we are planning to strengthen. Now, tell my listeners where they can follow you, where they can read more about the things you're doing, where, where they can link up with you and share their stories. For instance, if an investor is listening to us, where can that investor contact you on? Give us those links now. Yes, um, I'm on, I'm, unfortunately, I'm, on, I'm not on Facebook currently, but I'm on Twitter and Instagram. On Twitter, is Uncle Cole. Uh, Uncle Cole. And then on LinkedIn, it is Cole, Cornelius. And then, uh, I, like, can I be, should I put my number out too? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll add all those details into the link on the post when we publish in the post. So uh, you just provide me with the links oh, okay. and then I will provide it in the post. Now, let's oh, okay. go on to where you will give us your final lessons, your wisdom nuggets, and a word of guidance to my mm. audience who are trying to dream, follow their passions, and create a career, a, their own unique career, just as you're doing. Yes, yes. And then uh, uh, the only thing I would say, aside from uh, self-learning and motivating yourself and continue building on your craft and honing on your skill, uh, on top of that, though, what I would say is that uh, we are in, living in the information age. People should, if, if you, you don't get as much as information, you are suffocating yourself and you, you eventually shrink to death. So people should make sure get as much as information and leverage on the power of the technology. If there's anything you want to learn, you can hop on the internet. Google is a, uh, Google is a university on its own. And then you tap into it. You, you hone your, your skills through Google and YouTube. And you become a, a professional. Innovation family, today information is food. Eat it, eat it, and get satisfied. And you will never regret having that information. My brother, let's now do our personal innovation pledge. Okay. On this podcast, okay. every guest will do a pledge. Okay. Because we love what you're doing. Okay. And we believe that what you're doing can help you change the world. And we oh, okay. will not like you to end it. And because of that, we would like That's you to great. continue. So you make a pledge for us. And you repeat after me. Okay, that is great. I pledge to continue living my dream. I pledge to continue living my dream. I pledge to think bigger about who I am. I pledge to think bigger about who I am. 
and change the world by doing what I love. And change the world by doing what I love. So help me God. So help me God. Wow. On behalf of the Innovation family, we have witnessed your, your pledge and pray you fulfill it. Thank you very much for sharing a piece of you with the Innovation family. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming to bless us with your very special story. Thank you very much. Wow. Innovation family, thank you very much for tuning in to this episode of your Motivational Personal Innovation podcast. I hope to have you listen to the next episode. Thank you. Remember to subscribe because there's more to come. Follow Eric on Twitter at Sir Eric Suryram A and on Facebook, facebook.com slash personal innovation hub. Remember to rate and review the show. Share this with friends who need to hear.